there's no hiding it, radio communications are tough. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and myself and the team, we are just so proud of what we've accomplished with our new Private Pilot Online Ground School that I just love sharing little sneak peeks like this into our course. I want to give you a sneak peek of our Class D airspace module, where we break down Class D airspace here in the studio and talk about its requirements, its limits, and everything else. And then we go out and we fly in some Class D airspace, show you the radio communications, show you the nuances of operating in and out of a Class D airport as well. If you love this video, you're going to love all the videos inside our private, instrument, commercial, and FOI online ground schools. There is a link for a two-week free trial, no strings attached, in the video description either below or above this video as well to take action on. That is yours. You can hop on the Monday night webinars, interact with myself and our great team here at M0.com and just try it out. Make sure you love my teaching style and our videos before you spend any sort of money with us. We're a flight training community, not just a here's a course and good luck. We're here to teach you how to be a safe real world pilot and this video is a great reflection of that. In this video we're going to learn about Class D, Class Delta airspace. Class Delta airspace sits over airports that have control towers and the airspace is less complex than what we've previously learned than the Bravo and the Charlie airspace but it still has a fair amount of traffic hence the need for an air traffic control tower. Let's look at some Class D airspace here. This is the Class D airspace over New Bedford Regional Airport located in Massachusetts. The first thing we notice is that the Class D is one cylinder. There aren't any shelves like we saw on Class Bravo and Charlie airspace. A dashed blue line denotes Class D airspace. The dimensions of Class D are usually eight nautical miles across or four nautical miles from the center of the runway, and 2,500 feet above the surface here. In the dashed square, we see the altitude that the Class D extends up to. In this case, it's 2,600 feet above the ground level. If we subtract 25 from 26, we're able to determine the elevation of the airport because the top of the delta goes up to 2,500 feet feet actually above the ground here. If we look carefully, we'll see the number 79 under the airport information block. Since the FAA always rounds up, we can be pretty sure the field elevation of the airport is about 100 feet mean sea level. Class D airspace has a control tower, at least part-time. We can see the tower at the New Bedford Regional Airport as part-time because of the star next to the control tower frequency of 118.1. That star tells us the tower is part-time only. We have to check the U.S. Chart Supplement Directory to determine when the tower is in operation. When the tower is closed, the airport becomes a pilot-controlled airport. Now, you may wonder why some airports have control towers and why some do not. You can think of control towers like traffic lights. There are some small towns that don't have any because they just don't have a lot of traffic. But when traffic increases to a certain level, the authorities decide it would be safer to put in a traffic light at that particular intersection. Although Class Delta airspace has a control tower, just like Charlie and Bravo, it isn't as busy. But busy enough that the FAA has decided that they need a control tower there at least part time. Now, let's talk about what you need to do to legally fly in Class D, Class Delta airspace. To enter Class D, you must make radio contact with the tower, telling them where you are, your tail number, and type of aircraft, that you've listened to the weather, which comes in the form of our Automated Terminal Information System, or ATIS, and finally, what we want to do, what are our intentions, such as transition the airspace, or I'm inbound for some touch and goes, or a full stop landing. This helps the controller sequence you into the traffic flow. Your call might sound like this. New Bedford Tower, Skyhawk, 23 Mike Zulu. I'm six miles to the west with information Yankee, inbound for touch and goes. Now, if you want to take a lot of time, if the controller had to read the weather to every single airplane that calls up to the Class Delta, that would take a lot of time, wouldn't it? 
Notice we said we have information Yankee. We took the time to listen to it and we explained to them that I have information Yankee. So they know that we have listened to the weather and any notums or, or wind conditions that are on there and if anything's changed, the prevailing winds have changed, they can let us know. The controllers actually take turns recording the ATIS, usually at the top of each hour. So what happens now when tower controllers go home for the night? The airport may have automated weather, such as uh, the airport surface observation system or automated weather observation system, ASOS, AWOS, which provides current information. Now, if the airport has automated weather, the airspace reverts from a class delta to class echo. We're going to learn more about class echo in an upcoming lesson. If there's not automated weather, the airspace reverts to class golf airspace. Again, we'll cover that as well in an upcoming lesson. If you have questions about the procedures on any airspace, you can refer to Chapter 3 of the Airman's Information Manual, the AIM part of the FARING. Now, although the AIM is not regulatory, it's good operating practice. According to the section 3-2-5, when you are in Class Delta airspace, you need to establish contact with the controlling agency, the same way you do in Class Charlie airspace. If you call up for entry into their airspace and they respond, aircraft calling and such and such, standby. Well, we've not established contact. If they reply with your tail number and standby, two-way radio communications have been established here. As far as special equipment goes, you do not need, you, let me say that again, you do not need a mode C transponder for flight in class Delta airspace unless the Delta is, of course, beneath the mode C veil surrounding Bravo airspace. Because the Delta is beneath the mode C veil, well, then I have to have a functioning transponder to legally fly in that airspace. So if your airplane was certificated with a transponder on board, that means, though, if you're flying a vintage airplane, such as a J3 Cub, a design was, which was certificated back in the 1930s here, before anyone even thought of transponders, well, you'll be allowed to fly into the Delta. Now, if you're flying in Delta airspace that is not beneath the mode C veil, you're not required to have a transponder, but I can almost guarantee that the tower controller in the D airspace will say, we're not picking up your transponder when you report it because transponders become so common these days like cell phones. You kind of expect everybody to have one. So if you do not have a transponder, you'll simply tell the controller, hey, we don't have a transponder. And that's the end of the story for this case, right? When the tower closes now, the airport becomes a pilot-controlled airport. Now, where pilots just announce their positions, announce their intentions, just like we do at non-towered airports. So let's talk visibility and cloud clearances required to enter Class Delta under VFR conditions. This should, by the way, all be familiar. These are the visibility and cloud clearance requirements for Class Delta airspace. It's our old rule of 3152. To be legal VFR in Class D airspace, you must have at least three statute miles visibility, 1,000 feet above the clouds, 500 feet below the clouds, and 2,000 feet horizontally from the clouds. Three, 152. And that's Class Delta. Now that you know what the Class Delta looks like and the equipment we need and what you need to do to legally enter the airspace, let's head out to the airplane and practice what we've learned flying into a local Class D airport. All right, ground school members, in this video, we're going to now show a Class D, Class Delta arrival, and it all starts with first grabbing the Avis. Let's listen together. Contact is information Charlie. Charlie? This is the Council of Information Charlie, 1251 Zulu. 1090 at 6, visibility 10, clear. Temperature 190, 2.16, altimeter 3017. Visual approach in use, landing runway 36. VFR departures, advised ground control objection of flight. Advise on initial contact is information Charlie. Information Charlie. So I've got the GPS. I am eight miles out. I can also look and kind of you need to get good at judging distances as to how far out you really are here. About eight miles out from here by looking outside and looking at the GPS here. And I have information Charlie. First thing first, I'm going to cold call Ocala Tower, Skyhawk, 23 Mike Zulu. And wait, they'll come back. 23 Mike Zulu, go ahead. Ocala Tower, 23 Mike Zulu. I'm eight miles to the northwest with information Charlie inbound for landing. 
that simple. And they'll probably tell me, report a three mile downwind or uh, 45 or left downwind for 3.6, or report three miles to the northwest for 3.6, whatever it is. Let's call them up and see here. Ocala Tower, Skyhawk, 2-3, Mike Zulu. Two three Mike Zulu's uh, seven miles to the northwest with information Charlie inbound for landing. Okay, three Mike Zulu report uh, two northwest of the airport plane left downwind runway three six. Two northwest of the airport for a left downwind three six two three Mike Zulu. So he told me to report two miles to the okay, northwest uh, for a left downwind runway 36. Not too bad, we're six miles out now. We're gonna continue flying, we're gonna be listening for the other air traffic to see where they are. 2793 Foucher, Ocala Tet, runway 36 at Alpha 10, clear for takeoff, turn left on course. Taking off 36 now. Clear for takeoff, left on course, 2793 Foucher. Flying right on in. I'm 813 just... Hotel Yankee, runway 36, clear touch and go. One do the touch and go. One take it off. I'm just visualizing all of this as it's happening here. I've got the airport in sight. Lights are all on. This is about time we can do a nice before landing checklist here. All set. As needed. We're good. And then with us with the seatbelts before landing checklist complete. I'm five miles out. You told me to report two miles to the northwest. And I'm expecting a left downwind for three six. All is looking great. Just be quiet here. We'll listen. Maintain my altitude for now. I'm 5.2 out from the Ocala Airport. I've got the other traffic here, 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 and on the iPad as well. Four point nine miles out. I'm gonna start a slow descent down to a thousand feet. Don't have much to lose, so just bring it down nice and slow. Thank you, Hotel Pop. You're following traffic. You're heading to your left. You still got them in sight. Affirmative, sir. Thank you, Hotel Pop. Very good. Number two, runway 36. Slow touch and go. So there's two, two in the pattern. Uh, clear touch and go to Hotel Pop. This Hotel Papa's number two, as you heard him say. He had traffic to follow. He is 7350. There is traffic inbound from the northwest. Uh, frequency change for him. Please depart and coordinate about me. That's a 2 3 Mike Tilly. Watch for Mooney. Just departed uh, about a mile northwest, uh, westbound. Watching for that traffic, 2-3 Mike Zulu. Just gave me a traffic alert to watch for, which is tough, how that sun's coming in here. So we'll also watch on our ADS-B traffic. I can see he just took off there, but I don't see him outside just yet. All lights are on, just confirming that they are. Watch a little bit more. Still don't quite see him. Turn just a little bit this way. See if I can see him a bit better here. Never. Oh, I got him right out there. Not a factor. Coming up, got the airport right out here in front of me. I'm going to make a right turn for a left downwind for 3-6. As I know that sounds crazy, but a right turn for a left downwind for runway 3-6. And I'm almost two miles. I'll call him here in just one second. Point six 
out. Lights are all on. And Ocala Tower, 23 Mike Sulu's uh, 2 West Northwest. 23 Mike Sulu, Roger. Join the left hand one, 36. Thank you. Join the left hand one for 36, 23 Mike Sulu. So all he told me to, he hasn't cleared me to land yet. All he told me to do was join a left downwind for runway 36. I'll do just that. Not a problem. Flying this, I'm just on a 45 to that left downwind here. Let me turn that left downwind here in just about 10 seconds. And again, it's a right turn for a left downwind, as crazy as that seems. All right, here we go. Let's make a right turn for that left downwind. He didn't tell me to report anything. He just said to join the left downwind there. Two Mike Sulu in sight, runway 36, uh, clear to land. 36, clear to land, thank you. 23 Mike Sulu. So, again, just like I said, he came back to me, said I was in sight, and cleared me to land. Calagram, radium 47, hotel pop, uh, I'm right here by Alpha 5, want to tie down, ready to taxi, got information, Charlie, and I headed northwest at uh, 3,000 feet, uh, heading 320. Radio in uh, contact ground, this is tower, Your ground control 121.4. Sorry, I forgot to flip the switch. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. All right, I'll be my touchdown point now. Carburetor heat. Power comes back a little bit. 10 degrees of flaps. By the way, that gentleman who just made that mistake there, that's another reason why I like to cold call. Here I gave this big, long radio call. He gave us his heading, where he's going, his altitude, which isn't necessary to even tell that to everybody, but he just gave a big long radio call just to have Tower go, hey, you meant to call ground, and you need to call ground this frequency. Just goes to show you the power of cold calling. All right, car P power back, 10 degrees of flap, start my descent on down, wait until my touchdown point gets a 45 degree point off from over my left shoulder here. And we'll go ahead and turn base. I don't need to make any radio calls, he's already cleared me to land. I've got ground queued up as my next frequency. Again, always thinking ahead of the airplane here. Making my left hand turn. I'm on a left base for runway 36. A little getting a little bumpy. All right, I already did my before land checklist a ways back, but you know what? I am a person of redundancy. Everything's good, good. Anyone with seatbelts on me? Great. Slowing this airplane on down. On base, next notch of flaps, 20 degrees. There it is. Double checking final, looking at final. Final is clear. All looks great. 500. Avidine's talking to us. And I'm going to go ahead and turn final. Again, I'm already cleared to land. So no need to worry about that. But again, if I was at this point and I hadn't heard that landing clearance, I would be given a call. Hey, Tower, to their mics, Lou, just want to confirm. Clear to land? And you can always ask, right? Better to ask than to have to do a whole lot of paperwork. All right, looking great. Bringing her in for a nice, normal landing. On a breezy day, a nice little crosswind from the right kind of came out of nowhere. A13 Hotel Yankees, midfield down, 136. A13 Hotel Yankees, just floating it on in. Powers back to idle. Flaps are where I like them for this kind of crosswind. And a Calus Tower rating 47 Hotel Pop right to get on. I could take a departure from uh, Alpha 9 float. and I'm ready. 47 Hotel Pop, yes, sir. Alpha 9 goes. approved. Hold short of runway 36 for landing traffic. Hold short of 36 at Alpha 9. I'm ready at 47 Hotel Pop. So 23 Mike Zulu, Alpha 8, contact ground point 4. 
Alpha 8, ground point 4, thank you. 2 3 Mike Sulu. In 4 7 Hotel Papa, runway 3 6 Alpha 9, clear for take. All right, I'm going to pass the whole short line. I've already flip flopped over to ground. I'll come to a complete stop. Clean up the airplane first. Flaps up. Car repeat off. And now call ground. Morning ground 23 Mike Zulu, Alpha 8 to the north T hangers. 23 Mike Zulu, car ground Roger, Alpha to the T hangers. You can go all the way up to Alpha 1 if you want to. All the way up uh, Alpha to Alpha 1 at T hangers. Thank you, 23 Mike Zulu. All right, and there we have it. My taxi back on uh, to the hangar. A Class D arrival. Radio communications don't have to be intimidating. Practice. Get to a towered field if you don't have, if you're not flying out of one already here. And continue to practice. Get VFR flight following on all your trips. The more you talk to ATC, the more comfortable you will become with it all. I'll see you all in the next video. We'll see ya.